Doodle Bud here got some parts fresh off the printer with the new resin I'm trying out, this tough kind of flexible stuff. I'll explain to you why in the world did I print this in a moment. But we're going to go through, give you a quick update, show you where we're at. I already see some problems in what I did and also things I have to think about with printing the pen. But let's get into it. The big things I'm concerned about is wear and tear. So I printed this off. This is a really ridiculous uh, bolt. Uh, and nut feature, but what I wanted to do is have sort of an accelerated wear test. I was curious, one, how well it can hold up tolerances when I print things, but I want to know the wear and tear, especially if I have threads and moving parts on each other. So what better way to have something than this little kind of almost uh, fidget spinner? I can just have this in my pocket, have this in my hand, in uh, one hand, and I'm just kind of constantly doing this, grinding in the threads, getting the groove cut. Now, when I first took it off the printer, these parts were pretty tight. I could get it going down, but then it wouldn't go up. So it's been working itself in for a few weeks. And I'm just seeing the progress and it is getting progressively looser. You can see some wear and tear in there. There's some dust that's on there. Again, I'm going to look at this underneath the microscope. Um, this is, there's a lot of contact points on here because this is a seriously multi-start thread. So if we look here, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six start thread. And it's a fairly rapid one, an aggressive, fast th uh, thread. This will accelerate the wear and tear on these parts and I want to sort of see how it monitors. Here at the bottom on the part, another thing I liked about this, you can see right here we got some pointy bits and then when this comes down this goes right into the nut and of course the camera will not pick it up but here we go those pointy bits will sit right on the ends here and so this is where the material is the thinnest. So I'm getting up close and looking to see we got some chipping. How thin is it when it starts chipping and what's the minimum thickness before it stops chipping as well. Another thing I wanted to see was just dimensions, like how good is this resin pulling off compared to my drawing. So this is supposed to be a 16 millimeter diameter part. We're getting 15.9. This one here I believe is 17 millimeters according to the drawing. We're getting 16.9. I was toying with the idea of, of some components I like from the Visconti Homo sapien. Yes, the, the hook loop system on here I really like. Uh, I also like how it seals up in here. Now I have also cursed it because you can get your nib jammed in there, but there are some little modifications you could do. So I was planning to use this nib unit here, the whole uh, housing, nib and feet and all that on the pen. So let's just pretend this was the pen, pen I was printing. I want that to slide into here. And again, I already messed up the drawing. I forgot there's a two millimeter wall thickness in here. So hence the part is two millimeters too short. Don't worry, the next one, this is part of the process. You're going to find out things you forgot, things you you failed to uh, observe. But I wanted to have it go in here and then ultimately go into the cap and then have a little spring on there. So I thought, oh, I could just 3D print the spring. And if uh, you can see here, uh, that was a colossal failure. This is, that's not a spring. That is, that is proper properly, terribly done. So we just it just pops off. So that's a fail. I got to come up with a new design idea. You know, I could just have a little dimple in here and put a real spring in, but I kind of like the idea of a whole thing being 3D printed if I'm gonna 3D print a pen. You know, there's inspiration everywhere. And in this case, the next idea, the method I'm gonna try, actually, I got inspired not on the toilet, but by a toilet. As I remembered, I installed a new toilet a few months ago, actually probably a year ago in the kid's bathroom. And they have that standard beeswax seal when you place it down. Well, the toilet came with one where it's more of a, of a flange and it's got some plasticity to it. So it, it compresses and does this action. And I thought, oh yeah, when I put it down, you could feel it and it compresses. Well, I need something more like that on here. So I did a quick drawing. I'll show it on screen here to sort of have that. I need this resin to be able to compress and, and squeeze and flex and bend. And it does. So it's got a, this is the broken one. I want to see how much it could take and you know it can only take so much so it does have some give i'm going to have to adjust wall thickness and i'm going to have to design my part to accommodate for that material and maybe I have to change exposure settings and and all that type of stuff but that's going to be essentially the the kind of profile of the next rendition to replace the spring now to fit this inside and have it be self-retained so let's pretend i had a better design it's going to go into the pen and there should be some spring action so it's going to want to push down, but then when you push the pen in, it's going to push it back up to give that tactile feel and do the seal. There's going to be a little feature that self-retains this little uh, part inside of the pen. I want to see right now, I haven't done this yet. There it is. And now I got to press that in there. And I'm curious that that design I came up with 
is going to work or if it's too much and the thing's going to break. All right, here we go. Here goes nothing. Let's press that in. Yep, that is too tight. Let's try another way. Meant for this, I might as well take the nib out and I'll line it up and I'll see if I can press that in or if the feature I made is just a bit too tight. Oh, there it goes. It's going in. See if I can drive it home further. Oh, I might have broken the pen now. <laughs> so yeah, that's what happened there. I learned how those parts come apart. No one else has done this uh, magical disassembly in their review. <laughs> so we got some glue and uh, yeah, I don't know about that surface prep on there, how good of a job that is. There's a little groove there to carry the glue, but you know, the surface prep is not too fantastic. But anyways, back to my pen. Okay, I think, yeah, it's down in there now. So it made it pass, but the little, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of carnage. There's a little tiny, if you can't even see that, but that little ball there, there's three of them. I think they got worn down pretty bad. I'm going to play around to see if that's going to stay in or not and how well that slides up and down. So it's in there, but my fit is too tight. I need to uh, come back to the drawing board, just adjust my numbers a little bit. It doesn't really slide very well up and down there, especially after it had a bit too much of a tight fit with my retainer in there. Another thing I was playing with the idea of is being able to have a snap cap on my pen. Now this feature is already on here, so this isn't the exact design I wanted, but I put a bit of a ring groove in here. Now I it will be further up into the pen because it's gonna sit in here right about like so, and then the ring will be here, right just before this floating part. But I wanted to have it kind of here, so right near the end so I can monitor just to see how well the fit is and going in here yeah it's pretty snug so i thought that would happen so what i did is i have another one over here and i put just a slight taper on there so that way when it engages we've got a little more clearance and then we're starting to get that resistance going into that groove i'm just sort of feeling it can i can actually get a bit of a snap cap but is this material going to break is it going to crack so that's something i'm playing with checking as well that groove does work nicely has a nice snap action to it if it's further down in the pen it will hold it a little bit nicer so this isn't the fit i'm looking for on the final pen of course but i wanted to at least know is this a potential viable option can i do a snap cap on here and so far if i get the right profile I can get a bit of a snap action. I'm going to have to change if you want it to come out nicely. A nice positive in, but a nice out. So that's going to be a bit of a trick. I'm going to have to play around with that. When you're thinking about these types of things, you start getting inspiration and ideas everywhere. My chapstick, I notice, has a nice little snap cap action. And when I took a look to see inside, I go, well, how do they do this? What's going on? And I can see right here, it's the same type of thing. The contrast is not going to be able to at the right angle but there is a little groove in there just like i was doing and then they have these little balls right here so those go into that groove they're stuck out a little bit i think we got three of them on here and so that's something i think of now the materials are different but i can use this as a reference for at least how high these stick out the depth of that groove and maybe use that as a starting point to get the right snap cap action i'm looking for I got to tell you, if I could get a snap cap this good, this satisfying, and then have ceiling going on inside of there, that would be mission accomplished. So on top of all the testing I have to do with materials, wear and tear, fitment, I'm going to be chucking these against the ground to test wall thickness. I have different wall thicknesses. Are they going to crack or not? Lots of testing, but I also have to be able to draw all these parts the way I want them. And that's where today's sponsor helped me out. So I was fortunate enough to be sponsored by Skillshare for this video, and I've been using it to learn my Fusion 360. Now, I did this class previously with Austin Hartley. It has been really, really great, but I found another one by Alexi here, and there's a, he goes a little bit deeper on some of these, these concepts. So this was great for me. If you have a project you want to work on and you need to learn from experts in their own fields, this is a great way to do it. Unlike my YouTube videos, there's no commercial, so that's a big plus. And the content is all there. You go through, typically there'll be a project, at least with one. I'm working with the Fusion 360 to learn some design. And you follow through in you know chronological order. It's all laid out. You're not jumping around trying to find this video or that video. 
And then you can finish that project. And if there's something else you want to work on, like right now I'm thinking about starting my website. I got the domain. Here's this one by uh, Mimi here on how to set your own website up. So if you got something like this and you just need a little help, a little navigation, a little direction, I encourage you to you know consider checking out, becoming a member. And hey, the first thousand people who use the link below, you get your first month three. But let's get back to the video. Now look, if I wanted to by now, I could already have a completed 3D fountain pen. I got the guts here. I would just make my own section. You know, I got some test threads. I'm testing with profiles, but let's say I had the matching one here. In you go, thread it in, boom, boom, boom. It works, put the cap on, whether it's a thread cap, I'd probably just do that, be super simple. And then I have a pen, but that that's kind of useless if I did that. Yes, you can make a fountain pen from a 3D printer that has already been established. Why do I need to make another pen that just proves that point? I want to see, well, what can you do? What can't you do? There's even some coatings I'm thinking of applying to the resin later on post-processing to help increase the strength and also give some really cool visual effects. So this looks like maybe a total bust, but this is steering me in the right direction for what the next set of tests I need to do. So it's all about incremental gains, just making small little bits of progress testing something, getting the result, and using that result to guide your next decision. So this might look like a bust, things broke, things didn't fit, didn't work out, my spring sucked, all that stuff, but this is part of the process. And I'm gonna be sprinkling these little review, up. well, I should say update videos in between my reviews. I got a review of this bad boy coming up next, and this is a really, really cool material. So we're gonna talk about that and maybe do some, uh, some testing on that to see how that holds up too. But until then, here's where I'm at, and uh, we'll catch you next time.